The Rudd government has confirmed hundreds of thousands of Australians will have their bank accounts and tax details checked in a giant computer crackdown on welfare fraud. The move has angered civil libertarians who argue that Centrelink checks will be intruding on the privacy of poorer Australians. Big Brother peering into the bank accounts of the poor? This is too excessive. You shouldn't go ahead. The government insists it will operate within the Privacy Commissioner's data matching guidelines. It won't say how many bank accounts and tax records will run through the computers, but expects the checks to lead to 320,000 reviews over the next four years. It reeks of all the kind of Big Brother Mr Rudd knows best, and that's not the kind of Australia we want. Queensland Premier Anna Bly has a radical plan to ensure drivers and not oil companies benefit from the state government's fuel subsidy. A barcode on every licence is being proposed. When swiped at a service station, it will knock eight cents a litre off the price of the pump. The 8.354 cents a litre subsidy only ever had one objective, to make petrol cheaper for Queenslanders. And we are determined to put it in the pockets of motorists, not into the pockets of oil companies. The government's own fuel commission, headed by Bill Pinkett's QC, found up to $100 million, or about a fifth of the subsidy, was being siphoned by the oil industry. We're going to put an end to that. The plan is for all drivers to have a barcode on their driver's licence. When that's swiped at the service station, eight cents a litre comes off the price. This will guarantee that they will get 8.3 cents a litre off the advertised price of petrol. But the government's own petrol inquiry chief says it won't work. I can't see much issues at all. Says nothing will change. The subsidy still goes to the retailer and the subsidy still depends on what he says he would have charged. And there will be a shock when the new prices go up. The immediate effect will be that probably the average price in Queensland will move up by nine cents a litre. The government wants to have the scheme up and running by Easter next year. The key test will be what difference it makes. The subsidy is not really good news except politically. Number goes nationwide this week. ABC's Lisa Stark has a first look. Trey Hamilton's parents believe he is a safe driver, but they count on some extra help to make sure. A small tracking device mounted on his car. It's kind of like you're, you're in the backseat with him, but you're not. It's called Teen Insurance, developed by Safeco Insurance Company. For $15 a month, the GPS-based system lets parents keep tabs on where their kids are driving. And parents can set rules, driving boundaries, curfews, how fast teens can go. And if a teen breaks those guidelines... Hello, this is a notification from Teen Insurance. Mom and Dad find out right away. And if we have learned anything from history, it is that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. This is Aaron Russo, a filmmaker and former politician. To his left is Nicholas Rockefeller of the infamous Rockefeller banking and business dynasty. After maintaining a close friendship with Nicholas Rockefeller, Aaron eventually ended the relationship, appalled by what he had learned about the Rockefellers and their ambitions. And uh, we became friends. and. Uh he began to divulge a lot of things to me. So he said to me one night, he said that uh, there's going to be an event there. And, and out of that event, you're going to see, we're going to go into Afghanistan. So we run pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We're going to go into Iraq to take the oil and establish a base in the Middle East. And uh, he said, you're going to see guys going into caves looking for, <laughs> looking for people uh, that they're never going to find. You know, he was laughing about the fact that you have this war on terror, there's no real enemy. He's talking about how by having this war on terror, you can never win it because this is, so it's an eternal war, and so you can always keep taking people's liberties away. And I said, how are you going to convince people that this war is real? He said, but the media, the media can convince everybody it's real. I mean, you know, it's just that you keep talking about things, you keep saying it over and over and over again, and eventually people believe it. You know, you created the Federal Reserve in 1913 through lies. You create 9-11, which is another lie. Through 9-11, you, then you're fighting a war on terror. And now all of a sudden you go into Iraq, which was another lie. And now they're going to do Iran. You know, and it's all one thing leading to another, leading to another, leading to another. Now I would say, to them, Why, what are you doing this for? What, what, what's the point of this thing? You have all the money in the world you ever want. You have all the power. I said, you know, you're hurting people. It's, it's not a good thing. And he would say, what do you care about the people for? Take care of yourself and you take care of your family. 
And then I said to him, What's the ult- we're, we're, what are the ultimate goals here? He said, the, ult- the, goal, the ultimate goal is to get everybody in this world chipped with the, the, the RFID chip and uh, have all money be on those chips and everything on those chips. And if anybody wants to protest what we do or violate what we want, we just turn off that chip. That's right, microchipped. In 2005, Congress, under the pretense of immigration control and the so-called War on Terrorism, passed the Real ID Act, under which it is projected by May 2008, you will be required to carry around a federal identification card, which includes on it a scannable barcode with your personal information. However, this barcode is only an intermediary step before the card is equipped with a Verichip RFID tracking module which will use radio frequencies to track your every move on the planet. If this sounds foreign to you, please note that the RFID tracking chip is already in all new American passports. And the final step is the implanted chip, which many people have already been manipulated into accepting under different pretenses. We have a Florida family who are really pioneers in a brave new world. They have volunteered to be the first ever to have microchip identification devices implanted into their body. After 9-11, I was really concerned um, with the security of my family. I wouldn't mind having something planted permanently in my arm that would identify me. In the end, everybody will be locked into a monitored control grid where every single action you perform is documented. And if you get out of line, they can just turn off your chip, for at that point in time, every single aspect of society will revolve around interactions with the chips. This is the picture that is painted for the future if you open your eyes to see it. A centralized one world economy where everyone's moves and everyone's transactions are tracked and monitored, all rights removed. The most incredible aspect of all. These totalitarian elements will not be forced upon the people. The people will demand them. For the social manipulation of society through the generation of fear and division has completely detached humans from their sense of power and reality. A process which has been going on for centuries if not millennia. Religion, patriotism, race, wealth, class, and every other form of arbitrary separatist identification and thus conceit has served to create a controlled population utterly malleable in the hands of the few. Divide and conquer is the motto, and as long as people continue to see themselves as separate from everything else, they lend themselves to being completely enslaved. The men behind the curtain know this, and they also know that if people ever realize the truth of their relationship to nature, and the truth of their personal power, the entire manufactured zeitgeist they prey upon will collapse like a house of cards. They do not want you to think too much. That is why our country and our world has become so proliferated with entertainments, mass media, television shows, amusement parks, drugs, alcohol, and every kind of entertainment to keep the human mind entertained so that you don't get in the way of important people by doing too much thinking you had better wake up and understand that there are people who are guiding your life and you don't even know it. We're in a lot of trouble because you people and 62 million other Americans are listening to me right now because less than 3% of you people read books because less than 15% of you read newspapers because the only truth you know is what you get over this too. Right now, there is a whole, an entire generation that never knew anything that didn't come out of this tube. This tube is the gospel, the ultimate revelation. This tube can make or break presidents, popes, prime ministers. This tube is the most awesome goddamn force in the whole godless world. And woe is us if it all falls into the hands of the wrong people. And when the largest company in the world controls the most awesome goddamn propaganda force in the whole godless world, who knows what shit will be peddled for truth on this network. So you listen to me. Listen to me. Television is not the truth. Television is a goddamn amusement park. 
Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. But you people sit there day after day, night after night, all ages, colors, creeds. We're all you know. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube. You eat like the tube. You raise your children like the tube. You even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion. The last thing the men behind the curtain want is a conscious, informed public capable of critical thinking, which is why a continually fraudulent zeitgeist is output via religion, the mass media, and the educational system. They seek to keep you in a distracted, naive bubble, and they are doing a damn good job of it.